All right. So here we are again with this is game number four. <clears throat> Probably my least favorite matchup, which is TVT. But um, this one went all right, so I'm going to show it to you guys. He was basically playing a bio siege tank banshee. So it played really something you'd see more often against Zerg. Anyway, I played my regular macro uh, refinery before barracks. Extremely expansion heavy. Used a bunch of those extra minerals for extra uh, command centers uh, for defense. That turned out pretty well on a number of occasions. Uh, he sent out a scout real early. Um, I think his attempt was to harass my barracks worker, but uh, that's it's a Protoss strategy really. So this guy was kind of all over the board. Um, I chased off his SV easily. Um, scout crossing pass that's out of outside of my base. He's a little ahead of me on barracks, so he's probably went to barracks before gas. Um, I'm a worker to chase him away. Really not sure. At this point I was thinking, oh I'm gonna get him, so I jumped out of my building real quick, but he had just moved away. Anyway I hopped right back in. Unfortunately I couldn't get a scout um, he rolled off real quick. Once again, I was a little worried about double barracks, but in this case, it wasn't that. But I came up to the top of the ramp just to check. Um, it would have been good of me to stick around and see that marine pop out right now, but ultimately not necessary. Uh, at home, I start up the Reaper for defense, fill up the gas, and go down immediately to the expansion. Again, the goal here is to be ahead of the expansion and uh, expanding on base. So. Uh, I don't know, it's a little hard to say who's ahead on this command center. He is by a few seconds, but uh, mine's down on the low ground. So um, basically I'm 10, 15 seconds ahead just because of that fact. Starting up the factory, Reaper's out, starting up that reactor. We're about to have a factory swap here, but because I wasn't able to scout and I was worried about uh, two barracks plus Reaper, I didn't know he was going one one one, but because I was worried about two barracks reaper, you'll see me immediately create a hell ring to assist my reaper on defense, and then uh, with a reaper and a hellion, you can go on pretty good offense. And there's that hellion; he's gonna rally to that reaper. And then this barracks, uh, I don't have any interest in marines, so I'm gonna continue on getting ready for the factory. Uh, second gas immediately after I uh, the factory, and. Orbital immediately uh, finishing that baby. Uh, as you can see, I did a pretty good job not getting supply blocked this game. I stayed ahead of myself with that uh, supply depot. That's probably one of the things that I, I forget most often. I mean, like I mentioned, we're going on offense here. Um, he's got four Marines uh, ready for a bunker, so I, mean, I can tell he's going to play a little passive. But I'm going to harass, get some damage on him, see what I can do. Um, basically try to slow down this command center, if any at all possible. Uh, I wanted to try to go back in there and get that SCV, but he's not able to do it. Anyway, he's mining 3 out of 16. I'm already at 4 out of 16, so uh, about 10 seconds there really is giving me quite an advantage. Um, he just did a massive worker transfer. That was interesting. Anyway, no problem there, except this is just turning into a regular macro game. If we go back to unit totals, we both have the same amount of SCVs, so uh, really there's no benefit for anyone. Technically, I'm a mule ahead, that again is probably due to him having to fly over his team. So. Anyway, I've got that second factory going up here. More supply depots, I'm starting on my ground weapons. I do plan on playing the neck. Um, started up my gas here, but I'm a little mineral starved because I'm working up a defense in case of a drop, so I'm starting to put some turrets now. Um, 
you know, I've, I've obviously identified he's going bio, marine heavy, uh, therefore, again, I'm looking for medevac drops. Looks like he's mostly playing defense because he's going siege tank heavy. That early Viking's a little bit annoying, but honestly, I think it's way too early to be going Viking, but that's just a waste of gas. I really don't start producing vacuums until I'm full up on four gas. Uh, because I need all of that gas for uh, upgrades and siege tanks. So here I'm moving out to check for expansions uh, three and four while I take my third expansion. So I'm going to be putting on some pressure here, uh, allowing me to macro better at home. Uh, I have no interest in actually killing things. If I can get a little damage on some marines or something like that, that's worth it for me. And obviously Hellions are real fast. Uh, good map pressure, and they can move back and forth all around the circle real quick. And uh, if you look at my, my control group, they're really just hotkeyed, so it's really no, no APM sync for me. I just want to see that there are no command centers there. Uh, and again, I'm keeping my macro lead because I'm building my command center in place. Um, I'm starting to put out one Viking, and he's going to come over here and he's going to patrol for dropships. Again, we're kind of nearing uh, medevac drop timing. Looks like that was not what he was doing. He's just following the really safe, expand slowly right in front of you build, and I am not. I am expanding as, as greedily as I can get away with defensively. I'm now on the four gas, and uh, the Viking production is going to start. Uh, right now I'm doing uh, two factory tanks and Hellions, get my second armory up. There's that second missile turret for the, what I'm thinking this drop's going to be, so I can get this Viking out on the map. Um, my third command center is done. Um, I, don't, I don't necessarily have a supply lead, but I have quite a few mules down. And um, that's really it. So far everything is going well. Let's switch that on to... Uh, my view, watching a little more of the gameplay. <clears throat> so I like to always do orbitals as the main command center, and then if I'm going to add more command center centers, that's when I'll add the planetaries, as I have the available gas. Um, I really don't think it's worth it to just put down a command center and immediately make it a planetary. The mules are wonderful for mech in repairing and mineral gathering if need be. So we're going to meet over here just a little bit. And uh, I take some damage, but he wasn't sieged. I don't lose any Hellions. But the beauty of this here is I now know it's coming and I can prep. So I've got one siege tank in good position here. It can shoot just over the rocks. I'm going to bring another one and put it down over here. Um, a little closer to the right, and this is a good spot here. Really, I'm just going to get all the damage I can, force him to siege, and then back off. Um, it's now time for me to get my Viking over here to give me some vision, but I've got scans if, if necessary. I now have an extremely commanding SCV lead, um, solidly on three bases. He's just starting his third. He's really quite far behind. Um, so it looks like he just left this outpost force here kind of contain a little bit. Looks like maybe he's going to go around, but with my Hellions, I'm just, just going to dive that. There's really no point in me letting that sit there and bother me. Um, I mean, I have the, what is it, 15, 13 supply lead in SCVs, and uh, a little bit of supply in army. My, my lead in army is not too bad. Uh, so at this point, he is dropping me in the back. I uh, moved away some SCVs and chased it off. Really didn't lose too much there. I think I had 60 something. No, I guess I lost about six SCVs. Let me, let me rewind and go catch that. Watch that come around. So that drop is coming through over here. This is while I'm killing this, I'm going to be going and killing this tank, so... I, uh, I do see this coming. You can tell, because I'm at the barracks positioned here. Uh, very useful. Um, he loses a whole medevac with... I think it might have even been a tank. 
So I immediately surround these with, uh, with my SCVs, get some damage on them while I send in my troops. That actually helps out quite a bit. Uh, contains them so they can't run and kite. And, uh, yeah, he kills a couple SCVs. Maybe it was a little premature sending my SCVs back here, but honestly, I'm perfectly happy with it. I'm happy with the free kills. I have no issues there. So as you can see, his third base is really barely just starting while I'm almost completely saturated. Um, instead of making a planetary here, I'm like, well, let's keep this advantage going. We'll just beat this guy in straight macro. So I go ahead and move this one over here. And I'll generate another one to be a planetary in the center later. Um, I'm pretty happy with, pretty comfortable with my lead here. My units are trading effectively. I'm definitely macroing a lot harder. My income is substantial more than it is in both categories. And then I was floating some money from that fight, so I just uh, double expanded with four command centers, and the fourth one is here. So I'll just drop all that at once. I relieve some of the pressure, pushed him back, my army's out on the map. I'm pretty, pretty satisfied with where I'm at. I also can tell he's playing pretty defensive because he put up the sensor towers. Probably too early. I mean, maybe the timing's alright, but um, the placement is not good. Obviously, they're overlapping here. They don't really cover quite to the edges. At least that one doesn't. You know, sensor towers should really be more out here. I don't have any vision so you can see those pigs. Sensor towers really should be more out here. There's, there's really no point to have them that far back. I mean, it's, it's not really ideal. So, anyway, like I was saying before, this guy was going to mostly uh, bio, bio comp with siege tanks. Um, spending his gas on uh, Vikings, really, and siege tanks instead of uh, medevacs. But, I mean, he hasn't really pushed too hard, and the couple medevacs he has, he's lost. So, I mean, ideally, you should have a number of six or eight medevacs. He's down to four. So that's not too bad, but at this point, he's massively behind in supply. I hit about 68 workers, pretty happy with that. Uh, I can't remember if I build any more, but either way, I'm pretty good with that. Um, so I built out my watchtowers here near the edges, and uh, I can see his army coming in. At this point, my planetary and my siege tank are already ready to prep my workers to repair. I notice that I'm not preparing fast enough, so I drop some mules, but uh, at that point, he's already taking too much damage. My army arrives just in time to stop this drop on my tank. Um, and one other thing I forgot to mention is that I have finished the upgrades for the planetary range. Um, really, really, really quite useful. Um, with a range of seven now, it's pretty good. Nowhere near the siege tank. Um, and uh, over here, I, he left that same expeditionary force again. Uh, tanks, a couple of greens, and a marauder. I just dropped my Vikings on it. At this point, I've been double producing Vikings for quite a while, and uh, I've got my second star port up, so I'm quadruple producing now. He's in a lot of trouble, this seems very close to over. So let me just show you that, what just happened there. So I'll show you the Viking drop, and then I'll show you the medevacs that I picked off that are still in the uh, sensor tower range. So I got that medevac here. Hellions here, dropping the Vikings down. My ground force is coming up from below. So pretty quick, pretty easily dispatched. And then I see the two red dots up here. So I have my ground army opening up this barrier here so I can push the north. And my Vikings are going to go investigate. I'm thinking these are our paramarines, uh, but they're dropships. And uh, I think they were empty. At this point, the mech macro is he's really paying off quite well. You know, any attempts he's had to push into me, I've had either equal number or more siege tanks and planetaries in every location he's really pushed. Um, I didn't get a planetary here, it might have been an oversight. Um, I'm actually about to get hit down here. I see it, but I react a little too late. I'm pushing in the north and I forgot to upgrade this planetary. 
Uh, when I had built it, it had gas. I did not have enough gas. So my mistake there. Um, upgrade I recently finished was the armor. Um, but I had enough standby troops here that they get here near enough in time. I haven't lost too many SUVs. Uh, I think it looks like I lost two. I want to say I lost two SUVs. But at this point I have a, a commanding lead in Vikings. So in TVT you know you're in real good shape. Obviously I have this little fly advantage, but the commanding lead in Vikings really dominates the game. Because at this point I can switch into Liberators and Viking Liberator the tanks, and he's really going to be in quite a lot of trouble. So, easy kill on this tank, and keep got a Hellion or something like that. At this point I could care less about losing Hellions, they're really just the meat of my army. My only concern really is tanks and Vikings. Uh, pretty soon I'm going to be starting to get in fours. So my Vikings are going to go recon um, for more bases up here in the north and see what we can do about them while my ground forces deny this expansion here. And I'm pretty surprised he expanded to these two top north locations. I think this one here on the right is far easier to hold, but uh, a pretty crushing engagement here. Um, I've noticed the Banshees, at this point I'm like, well Banshees, now I know where he's spending his gas, so I'm not really worried about having to beat him in the air with Vikings. I'm going to worry about battle cruisers. If he's spending his gas on medevacs and Vikings, I'm good to go. So, I'm just going to come up here and try to clean up whatever units he's got left. Um, I think <clears throat> the poor choice for him to go Banshees into me having Viking superiority. Uh, I think that's just a pretty bad choice. <clears throat> One other thing you'll notice about my Vikings in TVT one of the most useful upgrades is the, uh, the mech upgrade. I've already gotten it here, so you can go here and look at it. Is the this one here, the smart servos, allows those Vikings to just uh, raise and drop so much faster, making them actually somewhat capable, uh, somewhat capable ground units. Upgrade complete. Anyway, I'm gonna be getting rid of this. Uh, expansion here. Uh, he pretty much was losing that no matter what he tried to do. If he stayed on the ground, he was losing it to tanks. Picked it up like he did, he was losing it to Vikings. Upgrade complete. Um, so at this point I have enough Vikings and I've identified that I won't be losing the Viking battle, so I've started to switch into the Raiders. So I've got some of these tanks. And uh, Force kind of uh, combat some of his Marines. Um, he's got a counterattack down here, and I've conveniently forgot the planetary. Uh, at this point, it really won't matter a whole lot, as uh, Vikings will be needed to defend this. Uh, my Vikings are coming back. It uh, turns into quite an interesting chase. I'm trying to get away with his banshees. I just end up dropping a whole lot of scans. I really just want to put them out of the game. You know, in game, it's tough to, when an opponent's being this passive, it's really kind of tough to. Um, know for sure that you have quite the advantage you did. And uh, I was kind of trying to do a test, you know, just uh, wins surely by mech macro and uh, defense oriented play. So I, I really felt no need to push in and kill him here. And I don't really have a good comp for doing it until I have enough of those, uh, <clears throat> enough liberators. So I'm just gonna pick off all the gas units I can and then run. Unfortunately, that's a huge ball of stimmerines and I lose quite a few of my Vikings, but honestly at this point the trade's worth it. He's really not able to spend his money. Um, I keep him expanding, I'm keeping him um, attacking, I keep him busy, some pressure. So he's having a lot of difficulty uh, really finding enough ground space to expand. I'm um, not sure why he built three orbitals. I mean that's one way to attempt to use your money. He's got three star ports. Building banshees, which are not a good choice. Um, had these been battle cruisers, um, would have done a lot better. He was in position to build battle cruisers, so I'm not sure quite what he was doing. Anyway, at this point, <coughs> I recognize that I'm definitely ahead of it. It's time to start pushing in and do some actual damage here. Uh, tanks and Vikings, pretty much. 
And then a couple Thors just to uh, defend my tanks while my Vikings are over. At this point, I just drop and kill off a bunch of those workers. And he's down to 42 now. That uh, was a good placement of his on the tank. I defended pretty well. At this point, he sees pretty well. He puts and uh, I think his marines were trying to come around and back and kick me. Um, Thor has wandered away from my tanks, so that's a bit of a mistake, but at this point I don't think much matters, so... He's done for me. Anyway, I hope you liked this, hope it was informative, I hope I covered uh, all the things you need to do. You know, some of the highlights. The barracks, the planetaries, the tank, position is good. You know, the tank can shoot out this far, the planetary can shoot out this far. It's a good protective, uh, good protective situation. It's a good way to use your minerals when you're going back to you. So I'm mostly mining gas uh, from these. Looks like I forgot to put my workers back, but uh, anyway, it was a good game. Uh, fairly well executed on my part. One of the things I could have done better was find and push this base. Um, just a lack of scouting on my part. He was doing a pretty good job of pressuring on different sides of the map, or like different units, so I was a little bit off, off the balance most of the game. But I uh, just continued on. Mecha Macro, very powerful TVT. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care.